Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. How's everybody doing? Great. Great. Wonderful. Well, um, I'm Carolyn Hightower, and I am here at the Hampton B. Allen Library, and we are very excited to have author and artist June Rollins. If you'll wave, every, wave at everybody, June. Hello. And we also have a lot of her friends here today, and we are going to have a discussion about her books and her creative process and whatever else we want to ask her. <laughs> so first off, I would like for everybody, and I'm going to switch it to the speaker view, and if we can maybe go through and just everybody introduce yourselves and maybe tell how you know June. How about we start with Hilda? Okay, I'll be glad to do that. June is my friend of, for a long time. And I met her because her husband pastored my church when they were in Wadesboro. I also got to know her even better because I took watercolor classes from her quite for over quite a period of time. Neat. So we and we've stayed in touch. That's wonderful. Okay. okay. How about Sandy next? Well, I knew June for the same reason as Hilda, that uh, our pastor's wife. Although I remember him saying that she is not a pastor's wife, she is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I took one watercolor class from her, and I decided that was not my strong point. But I have watched her grow as an artist over the years uh, through Facebook and just admire her talent. And now she's going into writing, which I'm delighted because when she lived here, she had started a book. And if I remember right, June, didn't you lose it all when your computer crashed? That first book that you wrote? You know, I think, I think it, I think, yes, a lot of it, yes. Yeah, so I'm glad you got back to it. Thank you. And next, Kay. Well, <clears throat> I met, <clears throat> excuse me, I met June uh, through June Witherspoon. And we uh, were in a, a club together and just loved getting to know her and her gentle spirit and the beautiful way she contributed to this community through her art. And our other June, June Witherspoon. I'm not sure if I'm June 1 or June 2. What <laughs> we used to laugh about that. She became a really close friend. Um, we went to art shows together, and uh, we, she would call and say, let's go to the mother country. And that would be wherever we wanted to go. Uh, she, and, and I've stayed in touch. Um, just. Uh, I celebrate her as a friend and a and, uh, wonderful spirit uh, she has. Uh, miss her, but yeah, we're, we're good friends. And next up, our artist and writer, author, June Rollins, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and Kind of catch us up. We we know that you once lived in Wadesboro, but kind of catch us up as to what you've been up to lately. Okay, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, well, of course, I'm June Rollins, uh, married to now retired uh, Pastor Rob Rollins, and uh, we were in Wadesboro. And I do remember him saying that, Sandy. He used to tell me the same thing. You're you're my wife. Uh, because uh, some of the situations were quite new to me. And I think he said that to put me at ease. And right. I think it's interesting that you remembered. Um, we uh, left Waitsboro and moved to Murphy uh, June of uh, 2012. And um, I went to the folk school. In fact, when we first came to visit the new church in Murphy, uh, there was a, somebody waiting there to whisk me off to the folk school while Rob went in and met with, with the uh, committee there waiting for him. And so I was introduced to the folk school and uh, right away got um, 
met with people and I was able to, um, there was interest in me being an instructor there. And then I, I got my uh, work in the craft shop. Uh, and we had been there six months. It was uh, in November and I was taking in a delivery of art to the craft shop. And I was approached by one of the managers that there was a part-time opening and would I like to consider that? And I, and I said, okay. And so uh, Rob and I had talked about it. And so I was hired to work there part-time. Well, um, six months later, uh, my mother passed away. And many of you remember my mother. She passed mm -hmm. away April the 9th of 2013. And I began full-time at the craft shop, 40 hours a week, uh, May the 2nd, 2013. And I have continued to work there full-time so that's about 40 hours a week. And uh, I enjoy it. Uh, it's a, many of you know about it. Uh, new students come in every week. They take a variety of different classes. And so I've learned a lot about other different craft forms and art forms and, and, and just have enjoyed that part of it. I, I had taught my first alcohol ink uh, class in Wadesboro in 2009. And some of you were in it. Uh, I was surprised at how it took off. Uh, there was a lot of interest, you know, people would see my work and they would want me to teach a workshop and it just grew. And when I, when we moved to uh, Waitsboro, uh, I had begun a Facebook book group and it had grown to over 4,000 people. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll create some DVDs for teaching. And so I created those first. And then I thought, well, I'll write a book. I had always wanted to, to write a book. And I thought, well, I'm, you know, I can write this book. I had tried uh, traditional pub publishing and Schiffer uh, turned it down. And I thought, well, I think this is still really good. I want to do it. And at that time, uh, KDP was Create Space. And so this book uh, was published in 2013. And, um, and I used Create Space, so it's self-published. And um, I hired a professional to format it, to, to lay out everything. Uh, I had, and um, I had tried to do it myself, but it kept getting rejected. Uh, so apparently I had done something wrong. And so I hired somebody, I hired somebody to do my cover art. And I'm glad I did because I felt like that gave it a more professional appearance. Uh, a self-publishing, you can just do it on a shoestring, but often it looks like you did. So unless you know what you're doing and I didn't. So that was the story on that book. Um, fast forward a few years, I had continued to have that dream to wanna to write fiction and I had little, all kinds of little rough starts. In 2019, our new director at the, uh, who, who was then our new director, Jerry Jackson at the folk school really put a strong encouragement out for all the staff to take classes. And just like with any workplace, sometimes you can get so busy and you're shorthanded, it's hard to get that week off to take a class. Well, he really, really pushed that. And I thought, I'm doing it. So in 2019, I took four writing classes. I think two were weekends and two were a week class. And through those writing classes, I got the feedback that I needed to, and some skills, some information, to write uh, this first book, She Lost Her Muse. And I had, I had worked on that and I was furloughed for COVID. Uh, 13 months I was home. Part of that time I worked from home, but a majority of the time I was literally furloughed. And I thought I'm going to write my book. And so I did. So this was written uh, while I was home, most, most of it. I think I had 40,000 words down and then I continued to work on it. But one of those classes in particular, because some people think, okay, well, how did, you, how did you do it? One of those classes in particular, and I mentioned her in the back of the book, was taught by uh, Darnell Arnold. And she was a wonderful instructor and had us do all these different exercises. And one of them, I just kept my little notes in case anybody, you know, just see the, to see the source of it. She had us write down, just, she would time us, like you've got 15 minutes, write down anything that comes to your mind that has to do with the setting of a scene. And so I wrote down all these different things, just random thoughts. And then after, we, after the timer went off, she said, okay, now choose five of those words and write your first paragraph. And I thought, okay. 
So all of that came down to one of these scenes in here, uh, Ernestine Wilkes. Uh, Ernestine Wilkes was sick and tired of seeing the dirty lime green umbrella dangling from her coat hook in Maypole United Methodist Church's community room. That sentence came from this list. And here's the lime green umbrella. This was my mother's. And when she died, and you know, I had to go, go through her home, my, my, my brother and I did, I bet there were 20 of these umbrellas. She loved, she never wanted to get her hair wet. And so there were umbrellas everywhere. And this one just really stood out to me. So I guess when I'm writing this list, it bubbles up from my sub subconscious. And on here, I've got lime green umbrella. So isn't that interesting? So that's just a little bit of background of how one thought leads to another thought, to another thought, to another thought. And then Ernestine uh, ends up being more developed in book two, She Held the Key. Uh, so that was also recently published and it's still just in digital form because I will tell you with self-publishing, I've invested quite a bit of money because I've hired uh, developmental editors, uh, the editors, the cover designer. So I, I've done this for the simple fact of wanting to do it. Uh, the, the dreamscaping book, the how-to book uh, is more profitable. Like it's still, still is doing very well. Um, the fiction is a little different, I believe. Um, you get lost in the hundreds of thousands of books that are published, but I, I am still happy that I did it. And I'm really tickled that you asked me to, to do this, to, to talk about my book. It means a lot. Um, so I guess in summary, um, if it's something, and I know a lot of you are already writers, you know, you're already published. And, and so I don't know if, I don't know if what I'm about to say makes any difference at all, but if it's something you want to do, if it's a dream that you have, you know, I would say, go for it and do it, you know? So I remember thinking, well, I'm gonna turn 65. I better hurry up. If I'm going to do anything <laughs> with, with this publishing, I better just hurry up and do it. So that was, that was a motivator too. But so now I can read another excerpt or I can pause right now and ask, you know, if questions, people want to ask questions or. Yeah, we could do that. And I, one of the questions I had was about the main character, Poppy. She's Poppy. an artist like you. Right. So right. I wondered if that being the fact that you're both artists, did that help with your character development? Definitely. Yes. You know, we're told to write what you know. Um, and I think some of that, when, it, when I think when I've heard that, it's not so much the actual knowledge of something because we can do any kind of research these days to find facts. But right, what you know is how you have felt in situations or the experiences that you've had. So um, yes, she, you know, her, her lack of confidence, her, her um, low self-esteem, I would say, yes, I can definitely relate to that. No doubt. Yes. And uh, I'm sure other people have questions as well. If you want to jump in. If you don't, I can read another excerpt. Or if you do, I'm happy to take them. Have a question. Yes, Hilda. <laughs> I just wondered if Poppy and the way she is described, her, her physical characteristics as well as her personality, if she perhaps came to you or was developed as a result of some uh, of a painting you might have done. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, in fact, that was going to be the cover originally. I had, uh, mm -hmm. I had done a painting of a, of a young woman in profile. And I had named that painting Resolve. And um, I don't have the original anymore. But oh, yes. Really? Yes. I, remember, I remembered that painting and I remember where we where you were when you <clears throat> got the idea for the painting, I think. Right, right. Yes, you know, I've had somebody ask me a similar question. Amber, uh, one of the other uh, characters. Uh, uh, she's from a, she's from a paint. Well, yes, she's from a painting. Yes. Yes. I thought so. Yes. Okay. The, the, yes. So Thank you, you have 
strong visual image in your mind before you even start writing about the character? Yeah, I would say yes. I may not describe it because I, I want the, the, yes, but I know how Liam looks. I know how they, I know how they all look, but I, I don't describe them because I want the viewer to, I don't describe all of them because I want, you know, the viewer to have their own. Same way with the painting. I, I don't like to, even though I, my, a lot of my paintings are representational, I try to leave some area for the viewer to interpret. Mm -hmm. I think it involves the viewer more, I guess in this case, the reader. Yes. Well, I like that you describe the reader as viewer because you're a visual person. <laughs> I'm a visual person. Right, if, right. Yes. If I can't visualize characters or scenes, and you do a good job with that, June. You do an excellent job of, of fleshing out your scenes and, and details that... Uh, oh, I feel like such a novice. Up. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's a, that's more one of the more difficult. That's one of my difficulties when I write is is, is doing that. Mm. Another thing that happened over COVID, I joined. Uh, well, I didn't actually join, but they let me participate in a couple of reading groups. And one group was a storytellers group, oh. and so we would listen to each other. You would eat, you would have eight minutes, and they let me read. But it was it was quite fun listening to the storytellers, how animated they could be, you know, and they use a lot of description. And I think that helped me as well. Uh, June, did you have the storyline, uh, the whole story in your mind? The, like the end of, you know, how Poppy ends up with. With her, not her real mother. Um, do you, did you have all of that? I think did um, you develop it as you went along. It, I had a general idea, but I'll tell you, I was surprised. And I think that's one of the things, things that is addictive about writing. Um, like that would be the other passage I would read if I did. It was a short one of when I was surprised. And I thought, well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I love that when that happens. Um, and I think sometimes it's good to follow that path and it may lead to nowhere, or sometimes it really leads to somewhere that is a twist or, or makes, makes it things more entertaining or, or goes to a deeper level uh, that I like. Um, yes, I think, I guess I'm a combination of what they call panster and outliner. Uh, I've, yes, I've tried to, the fun part of it is just to write. And then sometimes you have something and sometimes you don't. But I think it's good, I'm finding, to have sort of a general idea and then free write. And you might, either way, you're going to edit. It's either going to be earlier or later. Do you know? And people, I've heard people uh, like both versions depending on how they, how they do it. You either cut a lot at the beginning or at the end, cut as you know. And then there's some people that say that don't edit until you finish. You know, everybody has has their way or their method of of doing it. Yeah. I see you as a wordsmith. I always have. I, uh, with your naming of your paintings, with your the words that you use in your books. Well, thank uh, you so much. They make me laugh. Um, <laughs> you have a real talent there of, uh, of naming. Um, where does that come from? I don't know. I love to title paintings. Yes. I love to do that. I mean, um, you have Poppy and Violet and Camellia and <laughs> yeah. Maypole. <laughs> what is May Where's Maypole? Is that Waysboro? Maple, you know, it's probably a mixture. You probably maybe recognize the gazebo or the, yes. you know, there's, yes. there are uh, elements of different places that I've lived, even back from my childhood. And then there's imagination. I think there's embellishment, and exaggeration. Um, and, but, you know, yes, but there's like different things will flash and come to mind. Some are imaginary and some are from, you know, when I, you know, when I would write a scene about a gazebo, like when Poppy and Violet first drive in, you know, I see the street and the, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So when you when you were finishing, <clears throat> um, she lost her muse. Did you already have? She holds the key in your in your mind. Did you? Already I did. Have? Yes. Yes. I had originally thought that I would make it a longer series. Like she held the key is the concluding sequel. Um, when I went back to work and I wanted to keep my painting alive, all of a sudden I had 40 less hours. And what I found and or what I've read is that on Amazon, if you if I publish this book one, I was told or I've read, everything is online, you know, all the resources, that if you don't come out with your next book, relatively soon you're going to make a bad impression and you're going to lose your readers so i thought okay i'm going to come out with book two i'm going to conclude it and then i'm like i'm i'm working on something else but it could be three or five years you know i can't have a i'm going to have this out in six months do you know i can't i'm not able to physically do that with with also working full time mm -hmm. and also painting and also wanting to enjoy life you know it's like do you know yes but no i i i knew so one thing with, a, yes okay, so we have a request for another excerpt okay let's see okay so this is the one remember when earlier when i said something surprised me mm -hmm. this is the scene that really surprised me um okay poppy Poppy has, is in uh, Carson's home place for the first time. Violet and Liam are upstairs. This, this is chapter 13, Poppy remembers. And this is her flashback remembering. Poppy is six years old and afraid. She's in a big strange house filled with crying, hugging people, bringing in food. It's confusing to see two mamas instead of one. And she tries to hide, but there's a black cat with yellow eyes following her. When she runs to get away from the stalking cat, she trips, falls, and skins her knee. Sobbing, she runs to the closest mama and wraps herself around her legs, only to realize moments later that she's clinging to the wrong mama. This wrong mama's voice is soothing, and her hands on Poppy's back feel good, like warm, flowing water. This mama kneels down closes her eyes and holds her hand above Poppy's burning scraped knee. Her knee cools, the stinging goes away, and Poppy feels like she wants to take a nap. But just then the real mama sees them. Cam, what are you doing? She jerks Poppy away and she begins to cry again, not from her scraped knee that doesn't burn anymore, but from the familiar tight grip of this mama's hands. You know you're not to do that, Camellia. The mama with the touch like flowing water says, Violet, you can't keep it from her. Our mother is right. She has the gift. And so I didn't mm -hmm. know that was going to happen. And I thought, okay, well, let's just, and if you've read the second book, you can see how that, I'm not gonna give it away if you haven't. <laughs> Spoiler alert, right? <laughs> Okay, June, I remember that you and June Witherspoon gave me a wonderful book on contemplation and the artistic process. Yes. Uh, is that still a, a major part of your, is it a part of your writing life as well as your painting life? Yes. Now, I, I'm probably not as, uh, I don't, when I was in ways, well, you know, Thin Places, you know, it's talked about in this book, if you remember Thin Places. Well, the very first time I ever heard the word Thin Places, I was on a walk with June Witherspoon. <laughs> and we were about in front of Gail Lydekers in Charles's house. I remember we were about there going down the hill. And I said, Thin Places? What are Thin Places? And so that's the origin of that in the book. It's you telling me about that and me looking it up and studying it. And then we went to... Uh, uh, the Well of Mercy, which you told me about. And that's when I was introduced to um, contemplative prayer. And I really studied that in Thomas Keating. And then, you know, when I, I you know, I came to, I came to Murphy, I kind of lost uh, the ability to, I don't know if it's ability or something that wasn't lining up right. I couldn't go as deeply as I wanted to. 
And then it's like, uh, I, I circled back around. I would have fits and starts with it, but it never was as deep as it was when I was there in Waitsboro. Now, when I was also furloughed, I thought I'm going back to this. So I reread all of my Thomas Keating books, you know, and I set my timer for like 20 minutes. I had worked up to 45 minutes with a still mind, which is really a beautiful, beautiful thing. I think it's very healing, very healing. And I think now, I think now I'm coming to the realization that I can do that while I'm painting, maybe writing even, where you're so, well, flow state you hear a lot, but it's sort of true. It's like you're, you're somehow just going with whatever happens. You know, I try to follow the painting. I try to follow the words that seem to surface. June, do you use uh, the technique that, that you talk about in your book uh, for Bella Rosa? And you do? Yes. You, yeah, that comes alive. You do that, I know. But Oh, no, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I wondered in the book, Poppy oh, creates oh. a whole entire series, her midnight dreams, and they all come from dreams. So I wondered, has, has that ever happened with you? You know, I don't, I don't think to the extent that it did for Poppy. You know, I may think of an idea or think of something, but I can't say I've really, I can't say I've really done a painting in my, you know, and she didn't either. I would say probably not. You know, maybe I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, uh, have you tried all the recipes in, in your book? I tried one of them. <laughs> Melanie's. Yes. No, those are friends that I met, some of them through the folk school. Um, so who are, who, yes, who are, uh, they're professional, you know, they either teach or they, uh, they're professional bakers or chefs. And I relied on them because I don't spend that much time baking in the kitchen yeah so you're talking about the recipes in book two yes she right. held the key yes i thought that would be nice and make it more more real for people because the the recipes are talked about more they're more meaningful you know they sound wonderful yes Yeah, I, I thoroughly, I haven't read the second book yet, but I thoroughly enjoyed the first. So I'm looking forward to the second. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, would you kind of uh, tell us if people are interested in, and we have ordered a copy for the library. So soon, hopefully it'll be here available for checkout. But until then, if they want their own copy, how do they go about um, finding you, your art and your, your books. Okay, well, my website is www.junerollins.com and art is on there along with a link to the books to, that would take you straight to Amazon, you know, cause they're, they, uh, they're the ones who were representing it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll ever put, cause right now um, the only one in print is the first one. Do you think the second one will be in print at some point or is it gonna be just digital? Well, that would be about a thousand dollars for me oh. to outlay if I wanna have it formatted. If I do it the way I've been doing it, which I would. So I have to determine at some point, I have to determine when does this, when is this itch satisfied? Do you know, as far as, because for me, it has been quite an investment. I don't know how it is for others, but yeah, but to do this was, uh, and I used, I mentioned this in the back of book one, uh, Readsy, R-E-E-D-S-Y, Readsy, they have a big web presence, but they have freelancers on there that you can engage with and determine. And that's how I found the people that I hired. Is there anything else anybody else would like to add or say? 
Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us. I enjoyed it. I can't wait to read the second book. And I hope you'll continue to write. Thank you. I will. Yes. Yes. Thank you for having me. It, it means so much. I really love it. It makes me homesick, actually. I can cry. Oh. Not cry. <laughs> so thank you. We love oh. you, June. Whoa. We yes. love, I love you, too. Thank you so we much. We love you, June. I yes. miss you. Miss you, too. Well, you, there is one funny little thing. Sandy do, and Katie, you remember when I attended the the, the writing group there. Yes. And mm -hmm. I read a short excerpt and I remember reading and I said something about uh, a truck. I can't remember my character's name at that point, but I remember Randy Tarleton saying, what kind of truck? <laughs> and I want you to know every, every vehicle, did you notice that every vehicle is identified? We have a brown Buick, we have a, a blue Silverado truck, we have you know, everybody, I, mean, I thought, I'm, but I would hear Randy's voice saying, we want to know what kind of truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so everything comes around, doesn't it, Jane? It does. Yes, it certainly does. Well, well we, wish you, we wish you were back here to be in our writing group again. Yes, that would be wonderful. It would, you know, yes. Oh, look at the kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and hopefully you'll come back and either talk about maybe book two or even maybe we could talk about the alcohol inks or we'll definitely try to get you back if you're willing. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, say goodbye to everybody I'm live on Facebook and appreciate them watching as well. And please go to JeanRollins.com and check out all of her wonderful work. Carolyn, thank you. Oh, thank you.